Hello, in this video we will see how we can run a simple linear regression in Excel. And also we will see the relationship with correlation and what's the link between a simple linear regression and the correlation. And at the end of the video we will see how we can visually represent a simple linear regression. So first we will start with the example here and as we go further in this um, video we will explain the regression and the correlation. So suppose a fire insurance company wants to relate the amount of fire damage in major res residential fires to the distance between the burning house and the nearest fire station. The study is to be conducted in a large suburb of a major city. A sample of 15 recent fires in this suburb is selected. The amount of damage, Y, and it's in thousands of US dollars, and the distance between the fire and the nearest fire station, and here it's in miles, are recorded for each fire. So logically, whenever it's far uh, from, uh, the, the fire station is far from the burning house, it means the damage will be higher. So also we're having the data, the distance, and the fire damage. So first we start with the correlation, and usually the correlation, it answers how strong is the linear relationship between two quantitative variables. So the sample correlation coefficient denoted R, okay, as you can see here, ranges from minus one to plus one. It means minus one whenever there is an opposite relationship between the two variables and plus one whenever they are increasing or they are decreasing together. So you have to be careful because the correlation doesn't indicate a cause-effect relationship. However, it's an association between two variables. So in order to calculate it, it's equal correl, okay, as you can see the function here, and you have to choose the first uh, variable we're having with the second because we are trying to see uh, the correlation between two quantitative variables. So as you can see here, or the correlation, it's 0 0.96, so it's close to one. So there is a strong uh, positive relationship between distance and the fire damage. So now if we want to go to simple linear regression, the simple uh, linear regression, it's a statistical method that allows us to summarize and study relationships between two also quantitative variables or continuous variables. So as you can see here, it's uh, an equation y equal b0 or beta0 plus beta1 x plus epsilon. So the first, we're having one variable denoted x is regarded as the predictor, explanatory or independent variable. And here we're having a distance. It means whenever we're having a place or a home that it's far, it will affect the damage, okay? So uh, this is for X. And the other variable, it's denoted Y, is regarded as the response, outcome or dependent variable. And it's called dependent variable because it depends on X, okay? So like this, we're having the dependent variable, y and the independent variable x and we're having beta zero it's the y intercept it means when x equals zero we will have beta zero and uh, we're having beta one it's the coefficient and beta one it tells us whenever x increases for example by one unit y will increase by beta one if beta one was positive or will decrease by beta one if beta one was negative and also we're having epsilon, and it's the random error component. As you can notice, this is an equation of a line. And this is the one line that fits the data best. One for which the end predictions errors are as small as possible. One way to achieve this goal is to invoke the least square method, which minimizes the sum of the squared prediction errors. It means what we are doing here, we are predicting a line. However, uh, this line, what it does, and you can see it here graphically, 
it minimizes okay the error between the prediction what you can see here in orange it's the predicted uh, data okay it's this line and here um, what you can see in purple it's the data that we're having so this line what it does using the least squares is to minimize the errors and this is why we will have this one line that best uh, fits the data that we're having now what we are interested in in knowing okay the beta one and beta zero and in judging whether this um, this um, a line uh, can predict the data or not. Now we will move uh, to see how we can uh, get the different coefficients. So we go to data, data analysis, and we're having here, we have to select regression. So in this regression, first the input Y, it means I have to choose the dependent variable okay and also for x i have to choose the independent variable which is distance here and also because i selected the labels i have to click on labels and i have to choose the output range let's say it will be on a20 and i click on ok so here you can see we're having the result of uh, this regression first we have to look at the coefficient okay so this one it's the coefficient and it's beta one that we have identified okay and here it's the intercept or it's beta zero okay so like this if we want to write down um, the equation we can say y equal 4.919 nine x plus 10.277 okay so this is the equation of a line that we're having we knew it from the different coefficients that we're having so now in order to know whether these coefficients they are statistically significant okay we have to look here at the p-value and we are more interested in the coefficient of beta one, which is related to X, which is related to the independent variable. So here p-value, because it's less than 0 0.05, it means this coefficient, it's statistically different than zero. It means it's having an impact. And as you can see, it's a positive impact. It means whenever uh, there is an increase in one unit, okay, in X, which is the distance, Okay, the damage will increase by 4.919, okay? And this is how it's related to the dependent variable. Also, another uh, way to know whether it's statistically, whether the coefficient is statistically significant or not, okay? We can use what we call the rule of uh, two, okay? Whenever the t-stat that you're having here, it's greater than two, it means it's statistically significant means if we are using the p-value or the t-stat, okay, we will uh, have the same result. Uh, one thing also to look at when we are running a simple regression is the f-test, uh, okay? And here the f-test, it measures the, statist uh, the statistical significance of the entire regression. So here we can look here, okay? also it has to be less than 0 0.05 otherwise all the line it's not uh, it doesn't fit or it cannot uh, be used okay so here we have also to look here at the f test and it should be less than 0 0.05 one thing also to look at it's the r squared okay so the r squared it's a coefficient it's the coefficient of determination it's interpreted as the proportion of variance in the dependent variable that it's predictable from the independent variable. It means here, from the number that we're having here, it means the variations in Y, okay, or 92% per, per of the variations of Y can be explained by the variations of X using 
this line, okay? So again, it means 92% of the variations in Y can be explained by the variations in X using this model or this line. So now in order to see the relationship between the correlation and the R squared, okay, I will show you how it's power, okay, because it's R squared as you can uh, see. So it's the number R and power two. So as you can see, we're having the same number here. Also, we're having the adjusted R squared here, okay? And this adjusted R squared is a modified version of R squared that has been adjusted for the number of predictors in uh, the model. Usually, the adjusted R squared is more used uh, in the multiple regression, not in the simple linear regression, where we are uh, testing the integration of new independent variables. One more thing to say about the sample uh, and about the sample size, a rule of thumb that it's usually used by researchers is to have at least 10 observations per independent variable. So in our case, because it's a simple linear regression and we're having only one independent variable, so at least we have to have 10 observations. However, if we're having like three independent variables, we have to have at least 30 observations. Now, finally, uh, if we want to see graphically uh, the line, what we can do, we can go to insert and insert scatter plot, where we can see uh, the different dots and the different uh, numbers. Okay, so first what we have to do, we have to, um, to get the data. So in the short area, we have a right click, okay, and we go to click on select data, and we select the data that we're having here, okay, and we click on okay. So here you can see uh, the different the X's with the Y, okay, and what we can do, we can click on the plus here and we can add the trend line. And here the trend line, it's linear. So we have to go to more options. It's linear, we select because uh, some other regressions, they can be uh, not linear. However, the case that we're having, it's linear. And what we want to include, it's to display uh, the equation on chart and the dis to display the R squared. And like this, we can make the comparison. So as you can see here, uh, directly from the data that we're having, we can have the equation. And as you can see, we're having the same uh, equation here, y equal 4.919x plus the y-intercept that we're having. And also you can see the R squared that we're having, it's the same as we're having here. However, we have to run the regression in order to know whether the coefficients that we reached, they have uh, statistically uh, significant impact on Y. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it's useful. Uh, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for future videos.